Thank you all for being here. Um, this has been something that's been on uh, my mind, on the mind of the board of the Conservancy for a long time. And we've finally been able to give birth to uh, this version of this concept. So we wanted to talk as a group, as stakeholders that care very much about the Watch Hill community, about the uh, latest and greatest on sea level rising. We wanted to hear from those who were predicting what's going to happen. We wanted to hear from those who were sort of governing how, how we need to respond to that or what the regulations might be around that. And then I really wanted to do this, um, we as a, as a board, wanted to get together as a group so that we were hearing the information together and we could share our questions together and share we're all wearing different hats when we process this information, and so if we can share that um, process together, I think that we'll all be in a better place. Um, so this was set up as a three-meeting series with uh, who we thought were the key Watch Hill stakeholders with waterfront interests. Um, and so we brought, we invited the Yacht Club, and thank you, Dennis, for being here today. Um, let, and let me just roll back for a second. This wasn't the most convenient date for everyone. Um, so there will be folks that will join the next session or the session after that. Not everyone's going to be able to make every session. The concept was to do a meeting a month, to do it in the winter time when we had a little bit of space to think, to do this during seasons sometimes. This just feels too crazy and busy and, and not really a time to reflect. So we wanted to do it when we had a time to reflect. Um, so, uh, so some of us will see all three times. Some of us will see different reps from different organizations. And you know, everybody's welcome that way. But we did want to limit the group to be a group that we could really be kind of a working group, a real workshop or forum to, you know, to share our impressions of the information we hear, share our thoughts about what we might do with that, how we would respond under certain, you know, conditions. Um, and so, uh, so that's how we got to this size. So we've invited the Yacht Club, the Musquamacut Club, the Fire District, the Parks Commission, um, obviously the Watch Hill Conservancy, um, who else have you, did I invite? The Lighthouse, East the East Beach Association, Improvement Society. the Improvement Society, the um, and the chapel. <laughs> Although the chapel's wearing a bunch of different hats here. The chapel hopefully doesn't have waterfront property. <laughs> we're, we're, we're still hoping, right, 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 right. Exactly, exactly. Holy water. Um, and I, it's always a place of refuge. Right. One of the things that I really love about this group, too, is that we do all wear a bunch of different hats. We all have a foot in each other's doors and, um, and share a very um, collaborative um, energy towards, you know, taking care of our community in the best way that we can. So um, with that said, uh, I'd like to have all of you introduce yourselves. Many of you know each other, but some of you won't. So let me give a, first um, a little shout out. First sure, of absolutely. First of all, I'd like to say, hey, thank you all for coming. Uh, this has been something that I've been pushing for the last almost three years t for us to come together and speak with one voice um, as we go forward talking to state representatives about how to deal with the current onslaught of, of Mother Nature. And so it's important for us to at least be on the same table and on the same page. Um, I'd like to say kind of a quick shout out to Chuck Royce for allowing us to use his place here. It's a little warmer than downstairs in the reading room and um, it was great for all you to, to be here. So thank you. I think you'll enjoy this. I think that this is a, a kind of very interesting and challenging equation that's, that's in front of us. So. Absolutely. Thank you very much. The other person I think that we, we'd like to thank is Randy Abood. Uh, who made a contribution to uh, support the filming of this uh, series so that we can share that with our, our fellow board members and folks who weren't able to attend certain sessions. And, um, and then we'll see what develops from here. The, the group that we didn't include uh, before you introduce yourselves is we haven't, we didn't, we decided we would limit this to have a working group to just our community that we wouldn't reach out at this time to Westerly. We wouldn't reach out at this time to the Weekapod Foundation. 
we wouldn't reach out to mm -hmm. the Westerly Land Trust at this time. I think let's see, you know, how our work goes and and where where this leads us. Um, I'm thinking that it's going to lead us to a place where we have more questions or need further information in certain arenas, or we want to collaborate with others on certain aspects of what we hear. So, um, so let's just sort of see where this journey takes us. But so that's why you aren't seeing somebody here from the town of Westerly or somebody here from the town council or someone here from Westerly Land Trust. Um, at this point, we're trying to keep the working group small and functional and, and see where that takes us. Thank you all for joining us. And Deborah gave a, a sort of a great context for why we're here and what we hope to accomplish. Um, I want to set a little bit of a foundation for our two awesome speakers today, Brian and Teresa. We brought in the best of the best to inform you on the best science of sea level rise right now. And um, we're going to give you some terrific tools in uh, how to evaluate risk in particular properties that you might be interested in. We all had a really powerful aha moment last February and March. If you recall, we had three back-to-back -back nor'easters, two in February. The third was on March, uh, the, the third nor'easter was on March 3rd. What made that third nor'easter so spectacular was you're going to see this probably nine times today in the various presentations. It's a graph of high tide, low tide. And the blue line is our normal tidal cycle. Well, during that nor'easter, the green line is what actually happened. And so we had two feet of extra water on top of our high tide. The, so this, was, this was a pretty significant thing. Janice could have met quorum for her staff on Napa Tree that, that day because half of the people that work with her were on Napa Tree to see what a two-foot surge looked like. And here are some photos, and, and they're on the, on the wall too. This is standing in the commercial area parking lot, yacht club, the t-shirt store in the corner. You can see the t-shirt store was, was uh, well in, inundated. Just around the corner, looking at the cabanas, no foot access to Napa Tree, and there was a little corner there that was uh, above the wet line. Out on Napa Tree, kind of going up the dune, looking into the Beach Club parking lot, you can see the, uh, the, the wet line there. So this is normal high tide plus two feet of water. The important thing about this snapshot is this is Watch Hill in 2050. I'm sort of the low end because now the expectations are closer to three foot sea level rise by 2050. 2050 isn't that far away. If you take out a 30 year mortgage on some property now, you'll just be paying things off. And so two feet of sea level rise, what we saw during that nor'easter is the daily normal in 30 years. This is a map. You're going to see plenty of these today. And this is going to become your new best friend. Teresa is in charge of this project. And this is a wonderful collection of inundation maps with various sea level rise storm surge scenarios. And this blue line is the uh, two foot surge line in current conditions. Okay, Or you can think about this. The blue line is going to be twice a day at high tide in 2050. Take a look at this water's edge. That's pretty darn close. I would say this is within a foot or two horizontally of where the actual inundation was. The, uh, the beach club inundation modeling maps right on the mark. And so the map tools that Teresa is going to introduce are really, really quite good. So I, I wanted to show you this. You're going to be hearing a little bit more about these things as the day goes on. And as Deborah uh, has already outlined, our goal today is to give you the best science on sea level rise and storm surge for this part of the world. Brian's going to do that. Teresa is then going to take over and show you some various mapping tools. Our next meeting in two weeks, Janet Friedman is the, the 
resident geologist at the CRMC. She's going to talk to us about um, potential adaptation mechanisms and regulations that we'd have to worry about. And then the third meeting in March is going to be uh, hearing from, from all of you and what your thoughts are in preparing for these sea level rise scenarios. Let me give you a little bit of background on both of our speakers right now. Um, we'll hear from each for about 45 minutes or so. That'll give us plenty of time. We'll take a little 10 minute break in between Brian and Teresa so you can fill up your coffee cup or, or uh, stretch your legs. But as Brian mentioned, he's a professor of geosciences at Eastern Connecticut uh, State University. He is um, an ongoing geological advisor to the CRMC and a lot of their um, planning projects. He's also a science advisor to the Conservancy. Yay. He's, a, uh, he's a URI grad. His major professor was John Boothroyd, who gave a, an annual address for the Conservancy some time ago. And so um, the, the force of John has been passed on to Brian, and, and Brian has uh, every bit as much knowledge, wisdom, enthusiasm, and really most important, commitment to sharing this information to decision makers, leaders, and the community. Um, Teresa is at the URI Coastal uh, Resources Center. She's a, a coastal planner. Um, she has her academic degrees in um, landscape architecture and environmental policy from SUNY ESF in Syracuse and University of Michigan. And her day job is to inform com coastal communities on how they might prepare and deal with sea level rise and storm surge issues. And so she is, um, she is really kind of an expert in getting us to think about this. And she also manages the public facing side of something called storm tools, which I think you're going to find very, very uh, useful. So with that, let me pass the baton on to Brian.